Hello everyone. Today we will learn about neuroanatomy. Under neuroanatomy, the first topic is organization of nervous system, where we are going to learn basics of neuroanatomy. Nervous system is meant for the perception of internal and external environment, which respond with appropriate reactions produced by the muscles, organs, and glands. The human nervous system is the most complex. and versatile creation of evolution with advanced functions like cognition learning memory intellectuality personality and many more so here is the picture of a nervous system where we can broadly divide into central nervous system which is formed by brain and spinal cord and peripheral nervous system formed by the cranial nerves which are arising from the brain and spinal nerves which are arising from the spinal cord and autonomic nervous system let's see little more in detail here is the picture of the central nervous system where we can see the brain here this is the brain and brain continues below as the spinal cord so the caudal extension of the brain is the spinal cord and if we take a sagittal section from the midway of the brain dividing into two halves we can see little more in detail so here is the sagittal section of central nervous system showing the brain again and spinal cord present within the vertebral column here is the sagittal section of the brain now we shall see the parts of brain components of brain so it is mainly formed by the cerebrum which is the largest part of brain midbrain pons this is cerebellum which is also called as little brain so these are the parts of brain here is the autonomic nervous system autonomic nervous system is further can be classified into two parts one is the parasympathetic the other is the sympathetic so this is the sympathetic component of autonomic nervous system the sympathetic component is also called as thoraco lumbar outflow thoraco lumbar outflow because it is arising the nerves which relay in the sympathetic chain which is present on each side of the vertebral column and arising from the spinal cord preganglionic fibers and postganglionic fibers from the sympathetic chain they go to various parts of the body this is parasympathetic nervous system parasympathetic nervous system is also known as cranio sacral outflow so the cranial nerves which are arising from the brain and the nerves which are arising from the sacral region they form the parasympathetic nervous system we saw the sympathetic ganglions near to the central nervous system which are present on each side of the vertebral column or spinal cord whereas the parasympathetic ganglion are present near the target organs so here are the parasympathetic ganglions which are present near the target organs so these two are the components of autonomic nervous system peripheral nervous system also consists of cranial nerves and spinal nerves there are 12 pairs of cranial nerves and 31 pairs of spinal nerves here we can see the picture showing the base of the brain where the 12 pairs of cranial nerves which arise from the base of the brain and they are numbered from anterior to posterior so from the first i'm just writing numbers the first 
cranial nerve is the olfactory nerve this is olfactory the second cranial nerve is the optic nerve third cranial nerve is acromotor which arises from the midbrain fourth cranial nerve is also present along with the acromotor arising from the midbrain the fourth cranial nerve is trochlea fifth cranial nerve is the thickest among all which arises from the pons called as trigeminal nerve sixth cranial nerve it is present between the pons and medulla here this is the sixth cranial which is called as abducens nerve seventh cranial nerve which is little lateral to sixth is the seventh facial nerve eighth cranial nerve is called as vestibulo cochlear nerve ninth cranial nerve is glossopharyngeal nerve ninth cranial nerve arises from the medulla ninth is glossopharyngeal nerve tenth cranial nerve lies just below the ninth that is vagus tenth cranial nerve and eleventh cranial nerve i'm writing on the other side eleventh cranial nerve which is the spinal accessory nerve and twelfth cranial nerve also arises from the medulla which is called as hypoglossal nerve so these are the cranial nerves which are numbered from anterior to posterior in the base of the brain let's see the spinal nerves spinal nerves arise from the spinal cord and there are 31 pairs of spinal nerves so the first eight pairs are called as cervical which are getting origin from the cervical region are called as cervical nerves so first eight pairs are cervical then 12 pairs are thoracic thoracic then five pairs are lumbar five pairs are sacral and the last one pair is the coccygeal which is also present along with the sacral nerves coccygeal so these are the spinal nerves which are arising from the spinal cord there are 31 pairs of spinal nerves cervical eight pairs 12 thoracic 12 pairs are thoracic lumbar five sacral five and coccygeal one and next about the cells of nervous system nervous system consists of two varieties of cells called as neurons and neuroglial cells neurons the basic structural and functional unit of nervous system is the nerve cell or neurons and these cells conduct the impulses and have the unique properties of reception integration interpretation and transmission of impulses means the information to the target organs for appropriate response so there are approximately around 10 to the power of 10 to 10 to the power of 12 neurons in our human brain so so many neurons are there and these neurons do not undergo mitosis after birth so they won't undergo cell division so the number of neurons are fixed after birth till death and these neurons here is the structure of a typical neuron showing the cell body cell body is also called as perikaryon or soma and it consists of several processes which are called as dendrites and axon the neuron have a specific staining towards nissl stain because it consists of some substances in the cytoplasm and these substances are called as nissl bodies these substances are called as nissl bodies which have affinity towards the nissl stain what are these nissl bodies nissl bodies are rough endoplasmic reticulum of neurons and consists of granular bodies 
in the nerve cell bodies and dendrites so these nerve cell bodies are present in the cytoplasm of the cell body as well as in the processes called as dendrites and any nerve injury the nissel bodies will degrade so degradation of nissel bodies occurs which is called as chromatolysis during any nerve injury a typical neuron have a variable number of short branching processes which are called as dendrites so these are short branching processes as they divide the thickness of the dendrites reduced and the dendrites uh, carry the impulses towards the cell body so they receive the impulses towards the cell body so they are afferent and they connect with the other neurons by synapse and these dendrites are supported by the cytoskeleton called as microfilaments so the cytoplasm present inside the dendrites consists of microfilaments and one among the process we can say it is quite longer which is called as axon and axon is a longer process which is a projection from the neuron cell body and they carry the impulses away from the cell body so they are efferent dendrites are afferent and axon is connected to the cell body or the perikaryon or soma by this widened structure called as axon hillock axon hillock is the trigger zone for the initiation of action potentials means the stimuli gets initiated from the axon hillock and axon hillock uh, lacks of this rough endoplasmic reticulum and it also devoid of nissel granules and nissel bodies and axon is also devoid of nissel granules and nissel bodies the cytoskeleton of the axon consists of microtubules and neurofilaments microtubules means tube like structures filaments means thread like structures microtubules are associated with motor proteins two varieties of motor proteins called as kinesin and dynein so axons are associated with two types of motor proteins called as kinesin and dynein kinesin kinesin the moat motor proteins they move from negative to positive charge means from minus to plus whereas dynein moves from positive to negative charge so this movement from negative to positive is called as anti grade transport and dynein the movement from positive to negative is called as retrograde transport this is the structure of neuron where we can see the retrograde and anti grade transport from the axon anti grade is away from the cell retrograde is towards the cell body so anti grade is from negative to positive retrograde is from positive to negative so that is about the kinesin and dynein the brain and the spinal cord mainly consists of two types of matter called as gray matter and white matter gray matter consists of these nerve cell bodies so nerve cell bodies are located in the gray matter and the group of these nerve cell bodies within the cns are called as nuclei and the group of nerve cell bodies outside the cns that is outside the central nervous system in the per peripheral nervous system are called as ganglia let's classify the neurons based upon their structure here is first classification based upon the polarity polarity is the orientation based upon the number of poles from where the dendrites or axon emerges so multipolar neuron here is the multipolar neuron having dendrites all around and we can see a single axon arising from one side so the multipolar neuron we can see the perikaryon gives rise to multiple number of dendrites and a single axon and which is like a typical neuron and example motor neurons next is the bipolar neuron bipolar neuron have two processes 
one is the dendrite the other is the axon so here is the dendrite this is the dendrite and the other side is the axon this is axon and bipolar neurons are may present in the olfactory epithelium nasal cavity retina the eyeball and ganglionic cells of the cochlea and vestibular nerves present in the internal ear the third variety is the pseudo unipolar neuron pseudo unipolar means false and they have a single process which emerges from the cell body so this is a pseudo unipolar neuron which is having a single process and immediately this single process will split into ascending and descending fibers one is called as the dendrite the other is called as the axon so in it is called pseudo unipolar because during development they are like bipolar having two separate processes later during differentiation the two processes approximate with each other to form a single process for a short course and this kind of pseudo unipolar neurons are present in the dorsal root ganglion the last variety is the unipolar neurons and has a single process which terminally divides into dendrites and axons so here is the unipolar neuron which terminally divides into dendrite and axons and the these are unipolar from the beginning of the development so that is the difference between unipolar and pseudo unipolar and example mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal now so now let us classify the neurons based upon the relative length of axons and dendrites so based on the length there are two varieties golgi type 1 and golgi type 2 neurons golgi type 1 nerve cells are having long axons which may extend up to 1 meter length and here is a golgi type 1 which may extend up to 1 meter length example pyramidal cells or bed cells or anterior horn cells arising from the spinal cord pyramidal cells and bed cells are present in the cerebrum golgi type 2 neurons axons of these neurons are short similar to the length of dendrites so they are very short like similar to the length of dendrites so you cannot differentiate axons as such and these kind of cells are present in the cerebral cortex and cerebellar cortex so this is an example of golgi type 2 neuron and physiological classification of neurons we can classify them as sensory neurons and motor neurons sensory neurons are afferent means they carry the impulses from the receptor organs to the central nervous system so they carry the impulses from the receptors to the central nervous system are the sensory neurons and motor neurons carry the impulses away from the central nervous system so they are efferent so these are motor neurons which carry the impulses away from the central nervous system so that is all about the neurons and next we shall start with the neuroglial cells which are the other type of cells present in the central nervous system and neuroglial cells are supporting cells or interstitial cells which are present in between the neurons and which can regenerate means they have the capacity to divide and form the major part of nervous system and these cells are non excitable cells so they do not contribute in the propagation of impulses means they don't transform the information so they are just present around the neurons as supporting cells and neuroglial cells are present in four varieties in central nervous system the four types of neuroglial cells are astrocytes which are star like that is the reason they are called as astrocytes these green colored ones are astrocytes oligodendrocytes oligo means few dendrocytes means processes so these are the cells neuroglial cells which have few number of processes they are called oligodendrocytes the blue ones are oligodendrocytes ependymal cells 
they are like columnar cells with the cilia they are lining the the ventricular system of the brain so these purple cells are ependymal cells and microglia micro means small they are small cells so they are called as microglial cells so these are microglia so these are the four varieties of glial cells or neuroglial cells we can say glial cells also astrocytes are the largest and most numerous among the neuroglial cells astro means star like they fill up the extracellular spaces in between the neurons astrocytes provide physical support to the cns they are like scaffolding for the cns and they provide extracellular potassium buffer and these cells remove the excess neurotransmitters which are produced by the neurons and they function as glycogen reserve they contain bundle of intermediate filaments and these filaments are made up of glial fibrillary acidic protein gfap glial fibrillary acidic protein which is an astrocyte marker and these astrocytes proliferate and become hypertrophic if there is any cns injury so they are involved in the nervous tissue repair astrocytes form a scar in reactive gliosis and cell bodies are star like and they have like dendrite process so the cell bodies are star like having a many dendritic process all around the cell body so the process so the end of the astrocyte is like a small swelling which is like a foot so it is called as foot plate of one end and in contact with the capillary the other end is also forms a foot plate where it is in contact with the cytoplasmic membrane of the neuron thus the neuron is not in direct contact with the blood capillaries so the capillary wall the endothelial lining here we can see the endothelial lining which is enlarged and shown here endothelial lining and we can see beautifully the foot plates of astrocytes forming blood brain barrier blood brain barrier means they allow only particular substances into the neurons so they act as a blood brain barrier because they allow only particular substances can pass through the blood to the neurons one more thing about this foot plates of astrocytes these foot plates are quite dense and they are, make a resilient membrane forming a true capsule of the brain and spinal cord and they are composed of processes of astrocytes means microglial cells and covered throughout the by the pia mater so they firmly adhere to it and the two membranes are collectively called as pile glial membrane astrocytes can be classified into again two varieties protoplasmic astrocytes and fibrous astrocytes protoplasmic astrocytes are mainly present in the gray matter and their processes are thick and branched and tubular so they are branched thick and tubular like so they are called as protoplasmic in contrast the fibrous astrocytes are found in the white matter and their processes are thin fiber like and less branched so i am drawing for you all so they are like thin fiber like and less branched having the nucleus so these are fibrous astrocytes protoplasmic astrocytes will have thick tubular processes which further branch these are protoplasmic astrocytes protoplasmic astrocytes are present in the gray matter and fibrous astrocytes are present in the white matter next about the oligodendrocytes oligo means fewer dendrocytes means processes these are the neuroglial cells which have fewer number compared to astrocytes they have fewer number of processes and they form the myelin sheath of axons in central nervous system we can see it is forming the myelin sheath of axons of central nervous system and the myelin sheath 
not only in the central nervous system it also forms the myelin sheath of cranial nerve second the second one is the optic nerve so it forms the myelin sheath of optic nerve too and these cells develop from the neuroepithelium that is from the neuroectoderm each projection can malinate we can see here in this picture it is a beautiful picture showing that it can myelinate more than one here but actually it can myelinate more than 30 to up to 60 axons and it appears to be like a fried egg under histological view and which is a prominent nucleus with a clear and pale cytoplasm. The third variety of neuroglial cells are ependymal cells which are also called ependymocytes and uh, these are the choroid epithelial cells which line the cavity of brain and spinal cord and they are also present in the choroid plexus and they are simple columnar cells. They are simple columnar cells. Here we can see in purple color and apical part of the cells show cilia facing the cavity, lining the cavity and this cilia helps in the circulation of CSF cerebrospinal fluid and the microvilli increase the capacity of CSF absorption. And these modified ependymal cells known as choroid plexus which produce the cere cerebrospinal fluid. Tannocytes. Tannocytes are the type of ependymal cells which are in contact with the blood vessels and their main function is to transport the substances between the blood and the ventricle. So they are also modified ependymal cells. Now the last variety of the glial cells are microglial cells. Micro means small. So they are the smallest among all the glial cells and these cells in the CNS they are derived from the mesoderm. Means the whole nervous system is derived from the neuroectoderm except these cells which are derived from the mesoderm and they are smallest among all and they have the capacity to migrate into the surrounding neuronal tissue and become phagocytic when needed. So here are the microglial cells which are the smallest among all and these phagocytic cells they wherever there is an inflammation they engulf the pathogens, waste products and cell debris and capable of releasing an inflammatory mediators and signaling molecules like nitric oxide, glutamate respectively. And these are the target cells of HIV virus. Means the infected cells fuse to form the multinucleated Jain cells which are more specific in histological marker of HIV encephalitis and HIV associated dementia. Microglial cells are poorly identified with nissle stain. So nissle stain already we heard about it in the neurons where it is a crystal violet stain and it is an aniline dye which stains the RNA blue and has the affinity for polyribosomes rough endoplasmic reticulum present in the cytoplasm called as nissle substance and nissle bodies. Let's talk about the neuroglial cells of peripheral nervous system and there are two types of neuroglial cells in PNS that is satellite cells and squan cells. Satellite, satellite uh, cells are like capsular cells which are also called as amphicytes. So they cover the neurons like a capsule, like a capsule inside them. So they are called as capsular cells or satellite cells which are also called as amphicytes. And the next varieties are the squan cells which are similar to oligodendrocytes which form the myelin sheath around the axons of PNS including cranial nerves from 3rd to 12th uh, cranial nerves and these cells develop from the neural crust cells. Peripheral nervous system is derived from the neural crust cells. So the squan cells are also derived from the neural crust cells. And each cell we can see here it myelin forms a myelin sheath only of one axon. So this is a squan cell.
structural division of nervous tissue it is can be divided as gray matter and white matter uh, gray matter consists of uh, nerve cell bodies and white matter is mainly made up of axons and apart from this gray matter and white matter within the cns that is within the white matter if there is a collection of nerve cell bodies that is called as basal nuclei and whereas in the peripheral nervous system they are termed as ganglia and white matter in the cns forms tracts ascending and descending tracts and which are myelinated by oligodendrocytes and whereas in the peripheral nervous system they are myelinated by squamous cells optic nerve though we say it is a cranial nerve and part of peripheral nervous system optic nerve and retina are considered as the component of central nervous system because the optic nerve is myelinated by oligodendrocytes and if optic nerve is injured it never regenerates and there are, because there are no squamous cells apart from neuroglial cells and neurons the peripheral nerve also consists of connective tissue so the connective tissue which is covering the complete nerve bundles so the outermost layer is the dense connective tissue which is called as epineurium so this is the epineurium and we can see the blood vessels and nerve traversing the epineurium which supply the the complete peripheral nerve and apart from the epineurium the layer of connective tissue which is surrounding each bundle of nerve fibers which is called as nerve fascicle so around each nerve fasciculus there is a layer of connective tissue which is called as perineurium perineurium is clinically quite significant during micro surgery of limb salvage means reconstructive surgeries of the limb so during this procedure this layer need to be reconnected for regrowth of nerve the innermost layer which is surrounding each single nerve fiber is called as endoneurium so the endoneurium is a thin layer of connective tissue which is surrounding which is wrapping around a single nerve fiber clinical significance of this endoneurium it contains inflammatory infiltrate in gullian barre syndrome so this completes a basic introduction about organization of nervous system thank you